Greetings and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, comment and hit the like button. Today I got some more stories about real life vampires. And let me tell you, they are nothing like the vampires we know from the movies. As you will find out in following stories. Enjoy! The Tale of Johannes Kuntis Sometime in 17th century, Johannes Kuntis, an older man from Pentach in Silesia, died after being kicked in the head by a horse. He would not remain dead. The townspeople, has been made painfully aware of omens of his return, began immediately upon his passing. Kuntis was said to have made a pact with the devil upon his deathbed. When Kuntis' soul left his body, a cold wind aroused, generating a dark mist. A black cat emerged from the mist and proceeded to attack Kuntis' face, mewling his severely. During his funeral, the same cold wind arose and did not subside until his coffin was within the ground. It was said that the town watchman, guardian of the body prior to his burial, witnessed a phantom-like apparition that spoke with Kuntis' voice. After his death, reports of strange noises within Kuntis' house began to circulate through the town. Other surrounding townspeople also began to experience strange happenings. Reports made were jugs of milk or water being turned to blood, children were found to be missing from their cradles at night, a lineless of the priests and altar boy at the local church has been stained with blood. Reports became more sinister with every passing week. A maid from a surrounding home reported that she had someone riding around the house, then into the other wall, shaking it violently. Kuntis' uh, friends and family members began to report having violent encounters, one stating that Kuntis had pulled up two posts that had been secured deeply into the ground in a fit of rage. Kuntis also appeared to his widow, demanding to share the bed with her. When he was denied, he made several attempts at other women in surrounding area. One that was touched claimed that Kuntis' hands were as cold as ice. With each encounter becoming increasingly violent, the town people gathered to seek a solution to their increasing torments. It was general consensus to disinter the body. The town people met at a graveyard. The bodies that have been buried around Kuntis were found to be putrid and rotten. Kuntis' body was found to be tender and playable, but no means stiff after having been dead for over six months. After a staff was placed between his fingers, Kuntis' eyes opened and he gripped the staff tightly. When his leg was punctured, he bled profusely and began to struggle. Kuntis was decapitated and dismembered and then set to flames, which ended his undead region. Mercy Brown the Mercy Brown vampire incident occurred in Rhode Island, US in 1892. It was one of the best documented cases of exhumation of a corpse in order to perform rituals to banish the undead manifestation. The incident was part of the wider New England vampire panic. Several cases of consumptions tuberculosis occurred in the family of George and Mary Brown in Exeter, Rhode Island. Friends and neighbors believed that this was due to influence of the undead. An attempt was made to remediate, so she died January 1892, age 19. In Exeter, Rhode Island, several members of George and Mary Brown's family suffered a sequence of tuberculosis infections in the final two decades of the 19th century. Tuberculosis was called consumptions at the time and was a devastating and much feared disease. The mother, Mary Eliza, was the first to die of the disease, followed in 1886 by the eldest daughter, Mary Olive. In 1891, daughter Mercy and son Edwin also contracted the disease. Friends and neighbors of the family believed that the one of the dead family members was a vampire, although they did not use that name, and had caused Edwin's illness. This one is in accordance with threats of contemporary folklore which linked multiple deaths in one family to undead activity. 
consumption was a poorly understood condition at the time and the subject of much superstition. George Brown was prosecuted to give permission to exhume several bodies of his family members. Villagers, the local doctor and the newspaper reporter exhumed the bodies on March 17, 1892. The bodies of both Mary and Mary Olive exhibited to expected level of decomposition, so they were thought not to be the cause. However, the corpse of daughter Mercy exhibited almost no decomposition and still had blood in her heart. This was taken as a sign that the young woman was undead and the agent of younger Edwin's condition. Her lack of decomposition was more likely due to her body being stored in a freezer-like condition in an above-ground crypt during two months following her death. As superstition decided, Mercy's heart and liver were burned, and the ashes were mixed with the water to create a tonic and was given to sick Edwin to drink, as an effort to resolve his illness and stop the influence of the undead. The young man died two months later. What remained of Mercy body was buried in the cemetery of the Baptist Church in Exeter after being desecrated. Piatomich Although most Europeans stopped taking vampires seriously by the 20th century, belief in the creatures persisted in some rural areas. In the Bosnian village of Tupanari, for example, in 1923, a case of vampiric manifestation happened in Bosnia. The story started on the death of a village peasant named Piatomich on April 9, 1923. Some say it was May 1923, but the date May 1923 is the date that the case was published in the local newspaper, but based on the book of Alan Dundes, The Vampires, a case book, the incident happened on April 9, 1923. Soon after his death, his wife named Svia was alarmed about the sightings of her husband during the night. She claimed that her husband appeared on random guests and scared the occupants. She also said that her husband was turned into a vampire. Some villagers immediately believed her claims, but some others disregarded it. But when her sons, Kristo and Stevo, told them that they also have eerie experience with the vampire, the villagers started to grow weary. The two siblings called the attention of the town and asked them on what measures they should take in order to repel this evil creature. Finally, they made the conclusion that this vampire should be destroyed. The two siblings, together with some of the town members, stormed the cemetery to hunt the vampire. They exhumed the body of Piatomic and struck the corpse with a stake, which they believed has a magical element that strongly opposed to undead element. They also burned the body of Tomic and dispersed the ashes. The remaining bones were returned into the grave. Sava Savanović is one of the most famous vampires in Serbian folklore. Sava Savanović was said to have lived in an old water mill on the Rogačica river at Zarože village. It was said that he killed and drank the blood of the millers when they came to mill their grains. Although he is usually said to have been the first Serbian vampire, there are claims that he was predated in Serbian folklore by Petar Blagojević, who died in 1725. Blagojevic and the affair surrounding him came to European attention at the time under the name Petar Plogojevic and represented one of the earliest examples of vampire hysteria. Still, Sava Savanović remains today as the best known vampire in Serbia. Thank you for stopping by guys, if you have some scary stories of your own or some ideas you would like to share, please feel free to send it to me, my email is in the description box. And if some of you heard some strange noises during the stories, don't be alarmed, your house is not haunted, it was just my cat who wanted to be a part of this video for some reason. And since you are already here, please subscribe, leave a comment and hit the like button. Thank you, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Music